today we're going to talk about I fear and uh, talk about what you're afraid of and have, have you taken time to combat your fears with the truth of God's Word. And with every negative news cycle that we see on TV, we're exposed on a weekly basis to fear and death and crime and neglect and just the decay of humanity. And it's no wonder that so many people struggle with fear and anxiety and depression. And regardless of our feelings, regardless of our situations, and regardless of our uncontrollable urge to think that fear is, is good, we serve a God who is all-powerful. He's all-powerful over our feelings, over our situations, and even things in our life that are outside of our control. So the next time that you face fear of wanting to do something or fear that your life's just out of control and you don't know how to handle it, I want you to to give thought or maybe go back and listen to this a little bit. First scriptures, uh, the spirit that God gave us does not make us timid. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power of love and self-discipline. Fear has no place in the life of a Christian. And by the name of Jesus Christ, who lives in us, we've been given authority over fear. If we start to feel anxious or feel fear creeping in our minds, we can rebuke fear like we can rebuke anything else in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And we can find peace in that Spirit of God that gives us in power, love, and self-discipline. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you, and He will never leave you nor forsake you. While them, in this passage, refers to the giant inhabitants of the promised land prior to God delivering them to the Israelites, the core principle of this verse can be applied to both giants, literal and metaphorically, in your own lives as well. When you're afraid of something, or when you let things consume you, you start thinking that everything around you is negative. You start thinking that, you know, I'm so lost and I'm so hopeless that I don't see an end in anything. You, you start thinking like that you're out on that proverbial island all by yourself, that you're lost. You're like Gilligan's Island out there. You know, you got no radio. You got to fight for your own clean water, food. And you feel isolated to the extent that you don't feel like there's an end to a cause for anything. But I'm here to tell you today, 100% and unequivocally, that Jesus Christ died on that cross because He loves us and He stamped us His. That moment that Jesus died, He took our fears, He took our sins, and He took our worries to that cross with Him. It's up to us to claim Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords, to proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and to proclaim that there is nothing that can go or happen in our lives that could cause us or should cause us any fear because we walk with a living God. Jesus is alive today. Jesus is alive in this church. Jesus is alive in your homes all you have to do is open that imaginary door and let him in. Your life will be changed forever. And I, I was watching a video from a guy in, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, pastor, and he said, you know, one of the greatest things that I've, I've realized about life is that I went through the first 25 years of my life as an adult with anger. I was always bitter and angry about somebody and that made me um, like, like a child when it came. I was always fearful of everything. So I came out with anger. I came out with anger. And he said when he got into the ministry, he finally realized that all of that stemmed from anger. And a lot of that anger comes from disbelief in what God's capable of. God gave him to us. God gave us Jesus. 
God gave us that out for all of that fear and all of that anxiety and all of that depression. God gave us a, a man that lived by example, that walked by example, that talked by example. And believe it or not, folks, he died for an example of God's love for us. He literally died because God loved us this much. He was tortured because God loved us this much. And I know a lot of people that don't believe in God, they, they have this pretense in their head that, oh, if he's such a loving God, why, wouldn't, why would he have his own child go through this? Well, here's my rebuttal to that. He had him go through this because of the billions of people he loved. He had him sacrifice for the billions of people that were lost, and now they're found. He had him go through all of that because individually inside of this church and everyone listening at home, individually, God loves you that much that he gave his own son for us. And that should mean something, amen? Uh, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. With them in this past, I already said that. Ask him what he's willing to do for you. And then ask God what you're going to do for him. God asked Noah to build an ark, <clears throat> and he built it. If I was Noah, because I fear God so much, I'd have probably built two. Just hope there was enough gopher wood left over. God sent Jonah to Nineveh. He hid inside, you know, he put him inside of a big fish, spit him out, and he ran to Nineveh, and he prayed. I'd have ran to Nineveh, and then I'd came back and done it a second time, just because I love God that much. God had Isaiah go through town, unclothed, running around, I'd say I'd do that for a second time, but I'd probably been killed the first time. So, can't do that one. Psalms 23.4, which is something that I've told Cindy a lot, because Cindy's got a mouth on her sometimes. And she, she knows what I'm talking about. You want to see... She's, she's a... She can give it to you. And I said, Cindy, before you talk when you're mad, recite Psalms 23. And she always tells me, she goes, well, I can't remember it all. I said, just remember this part of it. Even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your food and thy staff, they comfort me. And a lot of other people have come, come to me over 18 years and said, you know, Pastor, how do I control my anger and my tongue? And and I tell them the same thing. I've told some of you in this church the same thing. How do you do it? Psalms 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Give your chance to meditate on God's word. Give yourself a chance to really feel God's presence with inside you. And see what that does. Now, David was a shepherd. And he was far more familiar with dark valleys in the physical world that he relied on God for strength to lead his flock to safety. But when David wrote this psalm, he was referring, referring to the Lord as his shepherd. I ask you today, have you allowed the Lord to be your shepherd? Read Psalms 23 in its entirety. It's a great reminder how God protects us all. We might not always understand his ways, and we can rest in the assurance that God's ways are always the best ways for us in our lives. We don't always know what the outcome is going to be in life. I said this a few weeks ago. Something tragic can happen in your life, and something's taken away from you. And you're mad at God, and a lot of people curse God, and they don't want any part of this so-called religion and this fake God and this Jesus guy until they realize years later that that person left so this person can come. And then that same God that you were cursing, you thank God for giving you that special gift that he's put right there in front of you, whether it's a child or a wife or a new girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever it is. You thank God 
for what he's taken from you to give you what you have today. So never take advantage um, of, of the blessings that God bestows upon you on a daily basis. God is a wonderful God. He's fair to everybody. We just don't see it at the time. Luke 12, 25. Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? No, we don't need to watch the news for very long before seeing stories of death and tragedy. It's easy to worry or imagine ourselves into serious situations. Um, but Scripture is clear. Worry does not add to our lives. It was Jesus himself who asked the above question during the famous Sermon on the Mount. Why do you worry? There's a rule for today's sermon. Don't, don't make Pastor John laugh because it hurts. Instead of worrying, you should spend your time seeking God, praying, reading the Bible, discussing your fears, talking to members of the church, discussing your fears with your pastor, doing all of those things. And by the way, Austin's right. Pastor Carter is a great teacher. Pastor Carter... Don't interrupt me, Pastor Carter. Pastor Carter's the pastor of this church. I'm the evangelist in this church. There's, there's a difference. See, I don't even get listened to because he's the pastor. So don't interrupt me. So he. Mm. Nothing will be able to separate us from God's love. Now, this was a letter from in, to the Romans that Paul declares boldly that despite all of the trials that he and other believers were going through and would still go through, there are multiple trials. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And he said, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Are you convinced yet? If you take the name of Jesus Christ by calling yourself a Christian, and yet you don't declare the verse above with the same certainty that Paul did, ask the Lord to increase your faith and your trust in Him. Ask God to take away that anger. Ask God to take away that bitterness. Ask God to take away that line or that pill or that bottle. Or, or anything else that's in your, your, your body that you don't think it is right by God. Ask in the name of Jesus Christ that this be taken from you. And the book of James tells us that if you pray believing, then your prayers will be answered. Now, it doesn't say that your prayers are going to be answered the second that you pray it. It will be answered in God's time. We always have to do something that a lot of people don't want to do, and that's wait for God. God's timing is perfect. God's power is perfect. God's will is perfect. God's will for everyone's life is a perfect will, and God is with you. In Isaiah 41.10, it says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with the righteous right hand. In some of these verses, they, they start to sound a little redundant because it's always do not, do not, do not, do not fear. The Bible, the, the Bible 365 times says something similar or the phrase of do not fear. That's God's power and also his sense of humor because when this Bible was written, over 4,500 years ago, God already knew that the calendar in the greatest country ever would be 365 days. So he made sure that he gave the man 365 times in a book, don't fear, because I got you every single day of the year. Every single day of the year, I got you. And some people are afraid of death. You know, here's the thing. Man and society can kill the body. 
They don't have any control over your soul. You do. Where you go after death is completely contingent on you. Brian can't make Linda go to heaven or hell, but her faith can. Her belief and acceptance of Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior will propel her into her final destination for eternity. And that destination, if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you repent your sins, you get baptized. If you do those things, but the most important of those things is to give your life to God and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're glory bound. You're headed to the pearly gates and you're in there hugging Jesus and bowing at his feet just like that. That's the goal for everybody or it should be the goal for everybody. Don't fear things. People are afraid to leave one job to go to another job. People are afraid to leave this situation to go to another situation. People are afraid to try new things all the time. I, I just, <clears throat> here's the thing, and, and everybody has probably done this sometime in their life. Man, if I would have, if I would have just done that, lead a life of no if I would have. Lead a life of Look, I tried it and it didn't work, but I learned from it. I, I tried this, it didn't work, but I learned from it. But then the third time I, try, I tried it, I excelled. I'm going to use Austin. Austin came in, he played bass. Right? Then he came in, he was a backup guitar singer and backup singer, right? Tried, tried, and then he is excelling as the lead guitar and the lead singer for the outlaw. Try, try, try. If he would have never walked in and did this, his confidence and his, I don't know if you guys can tell, his stage presence is even close to what it used to be. It's, it's, it's professional stage presence now. If he hadn't have tried and tried, he wouldn't be where he is. If you guys going through whatever you went through to be pleased, the academy, if you'd have went and failed, went and failed, and never tried again, you wouldn't be living as retired police officer. But you have to continue to give your life into new episodes. Don't be a coward and be afraid to jump off a cliff because you don't think somebody's going to catch you. If you're a Christian, we know who's going to catch us. Don't be afraid to live life. Because here's the thing. You do only get to live one earthly life. There's no retakes. This is it. One, and I've said this in sermons for the last 17 years or so, everybody inside this church, I'm going to bust my stitches, but we're going to do it my way. Everybody inside this church, everybody that's listening out there at home, every single person with no exception is going to die. You're going to die. Your children are going to die. Their children are going to die. One day, you are going to meet God. There is no exceptions to that. What you do now will determine what happens when you do die, when your children and your grandchildren die. What you do now will play an important part for the remainder of eternity for people. It's easy to want to jump and skip over people. When someone's beaten down and, and in a corner, it's easy to be the guy that still kicks them, but it's harder to be the guy that lifts them up. But that's what God wants us to do. Lift up the heavy burdens of other people. Lift them up and show them that Jesus Christ is alive and well and dwelling in an almighty place with a God still on the same throw, throne from day one. Lift up. Lift up your hands and pray for everybody. Lift up your hands and on come judgment day when all this is going to be gone that we look down and there is nobody left because they all rose into the kingdom of God because of something that you personally said or did. They get to go to the kingdom and see God face to face. For the, this is ridiculous. 
for the very first time. Be that voice of the voiceless that carries the Word of God into somebody that needs it more than anything. Be that voice of the voiceless that isn't afraid to go out and proudly proclaim Jesus Christ as their living God and as their Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Isaiah, For I am the Lord your or in John, for I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. God's promise is to comfort and help us amidst our worry. This Bible verse about fear holds the power to give us peace during the most difficult times of our life. The Lord will take your hand on this journey. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. We know we will face troubles in life, but one of the Bible verses about fear that can sometimes be comforting is John 16, 33. When you consider all Jesus faced, his torture and death, and how he overcame it, it should give you profound comfort knowing that you can overcome the same things even in your own life. You can overcome anything that you're anxious about or that you're scared about or that you're uncomfortable about. You can overcome whatever it is that's, that's got that boulder around your neck that's sinking you into the depths of the ocean. You can remove that boulder of hatred and anger and drugs and alcohol. You can remove that boulder by these simple words. I rebuke you in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Fear, you no longer have a hold on me. Anxiety, you don't have a hold on me anymore. This addiction, you don't have a hold on me anymore. Because my God, my living God, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went through everything that He went through so that I can tell you today, profoundly tell you, and loudly as I can tell you, there is hope for now. You don't have to wait till tomorrow to get hope. The Bible says we get it now. Pastor Carter says, his opening prayer, that if you accept Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, just like that, you're glory bound. And that is the way that it is. You are glory bound. All you have to do to achieve is to believe. Achieve, believe. Achieve, believe. And if you believe, if you believe that Jesus Christ walked this earth, and if you believe that he was beaten like a red-headed stepchild, and, and if you believe that he was crucified, and if you believe that he was killed and buried, then if you believe that he was resurrected on the third day, then you have to believe in all the power that comes with that resurrection. And that is absolute, complete power in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen?